my friends and welcome back to EVE Online with me, Mark from DadX and today we're going to take a drake and have a go at the EOM Rogue Capital Shipyard site. So we're going to go with the Alpha Drake. Obviously everything I'm going to talk about here will apply to an Omega Drake and I will have a look at an Omega fit and how much more efficient it is than the Alpha version right here in this video. Right, let's have a look at the fit. You may recognize it if you've watched the channel before. It is almost identical to the fit we used to kill the Orpheus. All I have changed for this fit is I switched the microwatt drive for an afterburner because after running a couple of sites, I found that running the afterburner was fine. But I'll talk about more of the site running when we're out there. And we've got a target painter here instead of the Weber that we had on there before. So we've got the Metaphor R-Blessed Heavy Assault Missile Launcher 1s loaded with Kaldari Navy Scourge Ammo. Now, in the last video, I made an error, as I did say in that video. It was my first run of the site. I'd seen a couple of videos to get a little bit of intel from. And I gave you a very bad bit of advice because the resistance hole for these rats is not EM. It is kinetic. So the Gila did a really good job considering I was using completely the wrong damage type. But for the Drake, we are going to go with the Scourge and we are going to go with Hornet Drone. So we're going to be applying as much kinetic damage as we possibly can. In the mid slots, I've got one restrained field extender. I've got, as I mentioned, the Enduring Afterburner. We've got two Tech 2 Multi Spectrum Shield Hardeners. I've got one Tech 2 Large Shield Extender and the target painter. Now that's 28% signature radius modifier to what it's hitting. The drones will benefit from that as well as us. It also counts as something that's applying to the enemy when they're out of range of our hams because the problem that we have, or I should say the restriction that we have, is we've only got 19 kilometer range. So if the rats are outside the range of our missiles, we can hit them with the target painter. That will help the drones target them and it also keeps some aggro on us. It counts as hitting the rats as it were. Down in the low slots, because I've messed about with this fit quite a lot and I'm not at home, I've actually got one ballistic control system, one. That could be a two. The other two are Tech 2 versions. And I've got a Tech 2 damage control unit right in there. In the rig slots, I've just gone for the EM shield reinforcer and two extenders. Now you might want to mess around with a passive kind of regen tank with your rigs especially. I wouldn't suggest giving any low slots to anything other than DPS really. I've got the damage control in there just as a little bit of extra resistance. And of course a little bit of armor buffer if it ever comes to that just through those resistances too. If I simulate this bit, we're up to a whopping 75,000 EHP. We've got a DPS of 464, that does include the five Hornets we've got there in the drone bay. If I actually switch off the weapons, we're getting a mighty 76 DPS from the drones. Well done drones. And the key to using this fit really is obviously we've got to get in range of the hams and we are going to get hit with Ewell which is going to restrict the range even further. But we'll do all that when we're on site, we've got plenty of tank. So we're going to give this a go. If you look at the resistances in the simulated fit, we've got 67% EM, 67% thermal, 75% kinetic, 79% explosive. And you will take mostly kinetic damage off the rats, quite a bit of thermal. And there's one particular rat, a battlecruiser called the Fanatic, which will hit you with EM damage. So do make sure you close that EM hole before you run this site. Don't just go for kinetic and thermal resistances. Just for a comparison, we're going to go over to Anne Frax and have a look at her Omega version of the same fit. It's exactly the same fit, module for module, with one exception, but that's not relevant quite yet. We've even got the same restrained shield extender in there. Everything else is exactly the same. Now, if I put the ammo in here, that's over an extra, that's about an extra 100 DPS just for being an Omega and having some more skills trained. What I can also do with this fit is run this right here at the shield command burst so if i put in a shield extension charge and run those they are consumable i'm going to be up to almost 88,000 ehp now i'm pretty sure this fit even if you didn't run the shield extender script actually didn't have the shield command burst on there you have no trouble running the site with the extra dps and the extra tank however if we do take full advantage of Anne's superior skills and go for Tech 2 hams. If we fire the Kaldari Navy Scourge, we're over 600 DPS. 
and when we get up close and we use rage we're up to 780 dps and we're still getting a range of 21 km and it's 25 with the navy for an so the ranges are extended too so that's the benefit of omega skills i don't think an omega drake would have much trouble going straight through the sights cap stable i think you should be able to do that nice and easy let me know how you get on okay guys this month's giveaway skin is the scope syndication procurer skin here it is very handsome if you want a very handsome mining barge or you want to liquidate the asset and make yourself quite a lot of isk then all you need to do is leave a comment down below relating to the event how are you finding the event are you running the data sites are you enjoying the combat sites how are you finding the loot on the high sec sites have i just had a little bad run or is it generally a little bit low and how much better is the site loot in the low sec sites that's quite important because they're obviously much much tougher anyway that's all you need to do leave a comment down below with your in-game name in the comment please to save me a little bit of admin and i shall be giving those out at the weekend thank you very much good luck Okay, here we are at the gate, waiting to go into the site. I've checked with a deed scan that there is nobody in there already. We will head in. I've moved the drone control window right over the buttons for the challenges, which is a bad idea, as we shall discuss later. You do need to hand them in to activate the next stage of the challenge as you go through the site. I'm neglecting to do that, but that's not too big a deal for me. Anyway, we're on our way in. First thing you'll notice is that there's a warp disruption and a web tower right here in the first room. In the Gila video there weren't, I can only assume somebody's gone into that site, killed them and then got out once they could. As I said before, that was the first site I'd run so I didn't know any better, but all the sites since then have had these towers in both rooms. So the priority is the web tower, it's going to slow us down, make everything else on the site apply damage to us better. I have to get into range to hit it with the missiles, but we'll get the target painter and the drones on there straight away. There are three destroyers in this wave, the purgers who will try to neuter us and the binder frigate which will try to web us. They are joined on grid by a cruiser, but these early waves are not too damage heavy at all as you will see. I'm going to speed up the footage and uh, as and when I shall slow down and draw your attention to certain points of the run. Keep a close eye on your drones. With destroyers on grid, they will take a lot of aggro. There is a type of destroyer which we shall see called the Black Dagger. They do a lot of damage to your drones. They can do quite a lot of damage to you. I was getting a lot of those in the spawns on the sites I've previously run in this Drake. This is the fourth site I've run in the Drake. The first site I made it right through. The next two I needed to go and repair once, but I still got the site cleared and I was never close to dying. I think the difference was that I was fitted with a micro warp drive simply because that was what was on the ship and I've switched to an afterburner and not having to deal with that huge increase in signature radius when there's so many different ships in different positions shooting at you and it's very hard to just pull range from all of them especially as we've got to be so close because of our range as well the afterburner definitely seems in this instance a much more sensible prop mod to go for. A micro warp drive is great if you just want to pull range and get out to where you want to be and uh, deal with all the rats from there but these spawns will not let you do that you're in the thick of it especially as i said with the hams okay the second wave has got one of the black dagger destroyers in it i'm keeping the drones in letting their shields get recharged you can take them down with a target painter and the hams it may take a little while but you will do it and then once we get onto the cruiser It'll go down nice and quickly. Again, we're not taking too much damage. We're fine for cap despite the newting that's been going on. There was another purger in this wave as well. The binder seems to have glitched. He sat quite a distance away with no speed. So I can only assume that he is glitched out as some of the ships were on the hunt event. So we'll go and get him a little bit later. I did wonder if the target painter being on him would get him to come towards me, but that was not the case. So, uh, I shall make my way over there once the cruise has been dealt with and deal with him. I have a probe launcher fitted on this ship. Obviously, it's of no relevance whatsoever on the running of this site. I guess I could have fitted a drone link augmenter, which gives an extra 20 kilometers to my drone control range, which will take it up to 60. But I'm not sure I'd want my drones that far away from me with the amount of aggro they could suddenly start taking. And obviously, they're quite a secondary thing to the Drake. 
So I'm going to keep an eye on them as best I can. We've got a couple of sanctifiers in this wave. They will try to get missile disruption on us, which will cut our range. I did consider the option of a missile guidance computer instead of the target painter. That could run scripts to increase the application or increase the range. But I think, to be honest with you, the target paint is the best bet, especially as I said, because it will hit rats and attract aggro, which the guidance computer wouldn't just because you had that running. So here now we get a missile disruption. Luckily, we're in close anyway. And the mighty Drake is tanking what damage we're taking very nicely, but there's not a lot of damage in this wave, to be honest with you. As you will see, that can vary. I'm generally making my way over towards the gate. I'm aware I'm not a very fast ship. Of course, I'm in high sec. I could have somebody come in completely OP and steal the site from me. So I'm just going to head over there, take my time, let some things recharge. Now, I do also need to point out that these high sec sites are different from the ones that spawn in low sec. They're not called anything different as far as I can tell, but they are a different kettle of fish i will show you later what happens when we go into a low sec site with this fit so these fits do apply to the sites in high sec only but i've seen some incredibly big ships out right in these sites i think the biggest most expensive must have been a chronos i don't obviously don't know exactly how much it was but it must have been in the billions so we're just going to head to the gate we're there we've let our shields charge up our capacitors charged up our drones are reasonably healthy and we'll head into the second room and it starts again with two towers that need to come down and again the priority is the web tower so we can get our speed up the warp disruption tower is secondary i definitely don't want it still on grid too long into the wave but it doesn't need to be a, the second thing you kill in fact we've got a fanatic on grid so the missiles are going to go onto the fanatic as you can see from the info screen there he's the one that does em damage so you do need to fill that hole they do get quite a good tank going, those Fanatics. As you can see on the armor there, he's got some pretty strong reps going. And it does take a while to get through his structure. He seems to have quite a lot of structure hit points for a rat. But he is a battlecruiser, so he should be pretty tough. But he's down. Again, we're not taking much damage so far. Though we do have on grid another quite dangerous ship. That's the Zealot Sword. They're quite a high damage dealer. There's only one in this spawn, so we're not taking too much I've been a little bit lucky with these spawns. I've had in the first rooms, I've had a lot more of those black daggers and the zealot swords piling on the damage, but so far so good. But we'll see how it ramps up. It's in this second room, the damage just ramps up over time. Or I should say more accurately builds up. And now I'm getting on to kill this last cruiser. These ones, he's called the Hoplo Chrisma. He doesn't really do much. So that's why I've left him till last. Right, in this wave, we've got two binder frigates. They'll try to web us. We've got two zealot swords and one black dagger. That's a lot of DPS. I'm going to keep a look at the drones. I was just going to say, I'm going to keep an eye on the drones. They've pretty much killed one already. So I feel sorry for you drone boat captains um, if you face a lot of those in waves. In fact, they've got two look before I could get them back on board, but it's not a big loss on the Drake, thankfully. But we'll get through these. But as you can see, this is the point in the run where the damage just starts to build up over time we've got to go in close so we can't kind of pull range and keep out of their damage range because our hams will only go so far do keep zooming out and checking just getting your bearings so you know where the rats are in relation to you and each other and avoid flying close to too many at once that's the way to mitigate it really but we've got to get over there the afterburner definitely seems to be reducing the damage we're taking over the micro warp drive i had first fitted on this ship and we are making good progress i'm not feeling too concerned i and also of course this is the fourth site i've run in this fit i've got a much better idea of what's to come so the next wave's coming in already here and i'm going to switch fire onto the fanatic because i'm a little bit more worried about his dps than i am the other guys and he's a little bit out of range there's also a ship on here called a sanctifier that's the one that's using the missile disruptor on me that's cutting my range down to about 15 kilometers so i've got to get even closer to the rat so that's why i'm going over here i've just started overheating both the resistance modules as i get down to towards half shield that gives me a basic 10 percent boost to the resistances with both of those overheated that obviously doesn't translate into 10 percent extra on the fitting screen you know how that works 
but that'll keep us going and this is uh, something you do need to be familiar with I think overheating thermodynamics is the skill you need to learn to mitigate the damage that your modules are taking so we need to monitor that nothing's getting too hot I'm not gonna let them get too burnt too early so I think when we get to about 60% I stop some overheating just so I've got a little bit left in reserve I haven't had to overheat the weapons at all yet Weapons will definitely overheat much quicker than those mid-slot modules will. Apart from prop mods, they can burn pretty quickly because they're obviously generating heat. But overheating modules is a way, it might even just get you out of a gate camp one day or off of a site just before you die, uh, just keep you alive until you hit your warp. So do be familiar with the concept of overheating. Overheating your weapons, it might mean you can kill that last rat before you have to run away. So it's something to play with, something to be aware of. I know um, a lot of PvE players, it's not really something that's kind of on their palette of things to do, but certainly it's something I learned through PvP. You always go into a fight with everything preheated. But anyway, back to the action. We are killing the battleship. I have not found the battleship to be a particularly daunting foe. Uh, I do take him down quickly because obviously he's got the disruptor and the web on us, neither of which are good. But on the previous sites, I've actually left maybe a cruiser or a battle cruiser on grid and not found the damage at the end too bad. I am overheating the hams now. That is purely just to speed this up. I know I'm in no danger of burning them out. It wasn't necessary. It didn't save my life. It just made it all a little bit quicker. So that's the uh, other benefit. It can just save you a bit of time at an end of the run if you know you've got plenty to spare and you're gonna be going to a station where you can rep. Why not just do it that little bit quicker? You can use nanite paste to repair burnt modules, but as an alpha, you can use it but with no skills to mitigate how much it's going to take to repair a module, it is ridiculously expensive. I'll demonstrate in a video one day. You're better off paying repair costs or throwing the modules away and buying new ones than you are repairing them with nanite paste as an alpha. But it can be done in a push. The battleship can spawn at slightly different times too. I've had him spawn as part of the last wave, um, during the last wave, or even after I've killed everything else and just had the battleship spawn by himself. But there you go guys, we've made it. We overheated a bit. We've never went under about a third shield, if even if that. The loot, unfortunately, is very disappointing. Just 5.1 mil. So uh, with the bounties, about 10. In fact, the last two sites I had were about the same level of loot. As I say, some of the sites, because of the spawns, will vary in how hard they are. And I don't consider it a fail to have to go and rep. If you do it cleverly, you just go straight to an NPC station, dock up, you repair. The repairs in NPC stations are free. If you can repair there, you go straight back out on grid. The two times I had to do it, it didn't take me longer than a couple of minutes. And I was back up there. I know it risks somebody else claiming the site and stealing it. But um, what else can you do? And it, you know, even if you're up there, if somebody comes up in a much better ship than yours, the chances are they're going to be able to steal the loot off you anyway. I'm confident with Omega skills, you'll make it straight through anyway. The bounties are very regular. They seem to be fixed for each site. I think you only get bounties for the Fanatics and the Battleship, actually, from what I've seen on the info screens. I may be wrong. Not that it really matters. Anyway, before we go, this is me in low sec going into a site. Some events clearly have different named sites and different versions of the site based on those names. This one doesn't. We're just here... So it looks all pretty much as normal to begin with. And I start running it on that basis. So I've taken down the web tower. I'm not even hitting the disruption tower. I'm taking down the ships that have got some DPS on me. But as you can see, the wave here, there's a lot more ships. It's also bigger ships that are using the E-wire effect. So the missile disruption on me. So my range is cut. So the DPS hitting me is already building up. My shield is dwindling. I've gone and taken down a disruption tower now because I realise I might not want to be sticking around. I've kept my drones in, but we'll see. I'm burning around. I've still got the micro warp drive fitted here, which isn't helping because that's blooming my signature radius and I'm in close anyway. So it is not the prop mod to move on this kind of brawly site at all. I can tell you that from experience, but the best way to learn is to try. I put my drones out. They don't take too much aggro. 
It's taking ages to get through this fanatics hull and I'm just going to pull my drones and I'm going to leave. And I think it's also time, my friends, to leave you. Apologies that there's no footage sound effects. I messed up the recording and I hope the backing music was acceptable. Leave us a like if the video has been useful and helpful and leave us a comment for the giveaway, please. But for now, take care of yourselves. Remember, even is believing, fly safe. And for now, goodbye.